Hello YouTube, I am the Definity Gamer, and welcome to how to make yourself your own custom Pokemon Go map. In this video, I am going to be showing you how to make this map you see before you. Uh, at the top, you can see there's a filter button. You can change your location. You can show the Pokemon nearby you, the gyms, the Pokestops, or you can show like a grid of where uh, the app is scanning looking for Pokemon. This is going to be helpful so you can resize it to fit your needs and make sure you get all the areas around you that you want to reach. Um, you can also uh, make sure you can remove some Pokemon uh, that you don't want to see on your map. So if you don't care about Rattatas, you can remove those. Uh, you can also be notified of Pokemon. So if you want to know if a Venusaur is coming up, you can notify yourself with a sound. It'll pop up a little notification on your screen and also give you a sound just to help you know that that's going to happen. All right, so in order to make this map, you're going to need to do a couple things. It is going to be accessible from your mobile device, so that's uh, a definite plus. Uh, and it will be uploaded online. You won't have to, to pay for anything. Everything's free. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to GitHub. It's the first link in the description. And you're going to need to go to uh, this repository right here. You're uh, going to have to have a GitHub account if you don't have one. You're going to need to make one. And then you're going to need to press the fork button and uh, fork off this repository into your own GitHub account. Uh, once you've done that, you're going to go to the Google API uh, credentials manager thing. And you're going to create a API key, a browser API key. And once you're done that, you'll be given a key. And don't use these ones. They will be deleted, so they're not going to be uh, able to be used by you. Um, make sure you make your own. Then you're going to need to go to Library. And you're going to need to go use the Google Maps JavaScript API. You're going to want to enable this. Mine's already enabled, as you can see. And then you're going to need to go back to Library. Oh, hang on. It's not working. So, uh, if I could, if, let's just refresh. I'll show you. You need to get one more uh, library. There we go. It's called the Google Web a Google Places Web API service. So you're gonna get that Google Web API services. There it is. Google Places API web service. That's the one you need. You're gonna enable that one as well. And then your API key is configured, and that's all you need to do for that. Now, one more thing you're going to need to do uh, is you're going to need to get a uh, Pokemon Club account. So you're going to get that Pokemon Club account. Make sure you keep, take note of what the uh, username and uh, password is, and make sure you also uh, use the verification process for that account. Now, finally, you're going to go to uh, Heroku. That's another link in the description. And here's where you're going to set up the app to work. So uh, first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to press New app create new app and now you can give it a name uh, whatever this name is is how it's going to be visible um, the one I used was Pokemon Go example so I'm just going to use Pokemon Go example 2 and uh, I'll be deleting the uh, I'll actually I'll leave these two examples up just so you guys can use them um, and play around with them and see if it's something you want to do and now what you're going to want to do is connect to github as you can see it's already connected to my github and you search repo and you're going to get the Pokemon Go map now you have um, this all set up and you might think now's a good time to deploy it um, set it up and you're good to go but you're not done yet you need to do one more thing you need to go to the settings and here you're going to need to click reveal, reveal config vars and you're going to have to put in a bunch of variables i have them over here on the side so i'll just copy and paste them and you can just copy these um, I'll, actually i'll leave these in the description as well now you this Google Maps API key, you're going to have to go to your API credentials and you're going to copy that key that you just made. That's the one you're going to use right there as the value. And then you're going to de do location. Now here you can put in your own GPS coordinates. You can put in like the Eiffel Tower or uh, Central Park or something like that. I'm just going to put in the same GPS coordinates. Let's just add a five right here or six right here. And that'll show me a different location than these. Um, and then you're going to put in password. Now this is a, a random uh, Google Club account I have. Uh, this is the password for your Google Club account. I just made this one specifically for this video and I will be deleting it afterwards as well. So don't use this one. Make sure you use your own. Uh, it, even if you use this one, eventually it would just get uh, banned or removed or 
So it's not worth using it, just make your own. And then you put the username and add that as well. So now you have all of these, these variables. You have auth service, PTC, GMAPs, and your uh, Google Maps key, location, and the location you want to start at, password, and the password for your uh, Pokemon Club account, step count, and this number you can actually change. I'm going to show you a bit bigger one. Let's go 20. And you know what, let's set the, the GPS coordinates uh, back to where they were so you can just see the bigger area it's going to scan. Whoops. My bad. So once you've already put the variable in, you actually have to click the little thing to change it. All right, so and then you have your username and your username. Now you can go back to the deploy tab and click deploy branch. And that's all you need to do. Your map should be completely functional after this point. Um, so just wait for it to build. Yours will take um, about the same amount of time as mine, probably. It's going to install a bunch of things, um, and then it's going to throw it up to Heroku. And then you have a little link you think you can take to follow to get to where your map is. All right. And when you're done, you should have this right here. Um, I usually go 10 to 15 steps as a step count. You can go 20 or more depending on how far you think you can make it in uh, like one trip. If you're driving, obviously you could probably make it 20, 25 steps. Um, I usually go 10 because they don't, it, the, the more steps you have, the less frequently it finds Pokemon in certain areas. So uh, if you have your steps really high, you're not going to see the Pokemon near you as often, and uh, sometimes it means that I see a Pokemon that's out of range, and I can't reach it because I only have 10 minutes to get somewhere that takes 11 minutes or whatever. So I like the uh, added time of having my step count low. And as you can see, it starts finding all the Pokemon. You can see the scanned locations grid. It'll show you, it'll keep growing as it scans different locations. Um, the pokey stops, everything works exactly the same. Let's just try changing our location here. So here's a place I sometimes go that has a lot of pokey stops. Uh, Unionville, there we go. And we'll just click right there. And after you change the location, it should start scanning in this area. As you can see, it's starting to pick stuff up. You can now see the pokey stops and the gyms in this area as well. Ooh, there's a war turtle over there. And that's it, you're set up to go. And if you use this link from your mobile device, it works. You don't have to set, do any more setup for mobile. Um, it automatically just works like that. And that's, that's it, that's all you need to do. And that's your Pokemon Go map. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. If you have any issues or comments, leave them below. And I'll see you next time in Pokemon Go.